Hey YouTube, it's your boy Redline, wanting to bring you another video. Um, this video is going to be specifically about uh, a beginning arc over Cyrus team strategy setup. Um, I know that a lot of new players have asked me questions about what's a good way to form your teams, what's the best arc strategy, and to let you guys know, be, uh, having a good arc team doesn't take a lot of time, effort, and chemistry, but there are there is a strategy that I am very... Um, a starting strategy that I really like that really got me to fine tune my coordination, got me to really work well with my teammates, and to kind of give you um, an understanding of what roles certain players should have and certain focuses that are very important in ARC. So I kind of want to share you guys, you know, a couple uh, a strategy that I really enjoy, and I think for early players who are really trying to understand ARC, um, it's a really good starting point to to really fine tune those skills. Um. At the end of the day, you know, ARC is a very unique game style, right? There's so many different variations of strategies, different combinations you can use, different, you know, different ways of winning the game. But for this specific strategy, I really like because it helps new players or players who are not familiar with ARC to really fine tune those specific details of coordination, um, knowing what to focus on and just building chemistry with other teammates. So I'm going to dive right into that. And I hope that, you know, some of these tips will help you. And maybe for new players who are trying to get a really good art team, this will, this might be a good starting foundation for you to kind of build upon. So hope other than that, I hope you guys enjoy. All right. So I have a map of the Ark of Osiris map. So I, I know um, a lot of teams who start off, they tend to have two teams right a team a team one for example on the left hand side and then a team two on the right hand side and the players there will focus on each respective side and so a lot of people have a team for the middle a lot of people converge for both sides going to the middle but i feel like for a lot of teams that are starting out a lot of players can't really manage handling five marches at a time knowing what to defend the structure knowing to push on offensive and it, get, it can get kind of confusing if your map your marches are all over the map so with this strategy, that I kind of want to show you here, this strategy has four teams and each team has a specific lane to focus on. So on this map here, I have team one, team two, team three, and team four. The distribution of players can vary, right? But for me particularly, I like having a higher focus of players within team two and team three. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But for this lane specific strategy, each team here has a specific focus of what building to defend at all times and what um, objective to continually attack. So for example, in team three, they're be designated just for the desert altar. So all the players there, their only job there is to des uh, defend a desert altar. And then on offense, their only job is to attack the shrine of war. So I, by focusing on specific objectives to defend and attack, your players will will um, blah, what's that word called? Will will be more focused on understanding how to fill a structure, when to fill a rally. Because constantly, if you have one objective to defend and one objective to attack, over time your players will get better at doing those basic um, functionalities of defending and attacking. For example, for Team Four, their only job is to defend the Shrine of Life or attack the Sky Altar. Team Two, Shrine of War, Desert Altar. Team One, Sky Altar and Shrine of Life. By having these specific lane, your group of players will know exactly when they're rallying a structure, what structure they're going for. They're not going to be like, oh crap, I'm, we're rallying the Desert Altar and the Shrine of Life. I'll send two of my marches into those both rallies, and then I'll send one march there, and we'll send two marches over here. It can be really confusing, and I feel like you're not really optimizing your marches to taking structures or defending a structure. So I think this specific lane strategy will work for a lot for newer players to just to get those basic fundamentals down. Another really important thing for this specific starting team strategy is normally people are one giant voice discord or they'll break it off into two discord team voice chats. Discord is very important in my opinion to be very successful and, and an arc team because you, using chats, using discord to communicate, you know, through written communication, um, can very can be very costly because of timing when someone reads that message or putting markers it's it can all delay time of getting objective getting the arc or filling a rally whatever it is right voice discord in my opinion is very important for you to be successful at winning an art game so for this specific strat i think i think that four voice channels are important for team one team two team three and team four 
each channel will have a, a captain that kind of makes the call outs because again if you have one structure for each team to defend and one structure to attack the team lead can be like okay everyone we're gonna garrison the shard of life get in there we microfill it reinforce it or if it's time to rally okay you three people move your marches up rally the sky altar that's what we're gonna do so like if one team lead on voice chat dictates the communication it's there's no chaos within the voice uh discord saying 10 people are saying different things when you have one specific team lead um, telling you guys what to do. And you always have to make sure that that team lead is someone that knows what they're doing, knows what the proper garrison commander can set up, knows what the proper rallies are for, and knowing when to tell your team to microfill, tell your team to reinforce the rally, or doing any necessary callouts for that specific team to defend the objective or rally the objective and when it's time to push. Now, remember that I mentioned that for me, I, I feel like Team 2 and Team 3 need to have more players than Team 4 and Team 1 would be because specifically Team 2 and Team 3 are closer to the mid where, where the arc spawns. So having more players in these two teams will be very important for, for arc capture. And for this specific strat, what I feel like is really good for these two teams is as you guys determine when arc goes, you can determine for Team 2 and Team 3 when it's a good time to push for arc. Normally, a lot of teams like to already get setting up in the middle around the two, three minute mark, sometimes four, depending on how the game is going. But here for team three and team two, you have the ability, we have more players, and that your, your lane specific is if you're rallying the Desert Ultra for team two and you're rallying the Shrine of War for team three, you can coordinate with these two teams to push at a certain time where if you're rallying the objective here, you take it, you don't take it, because again, it's all about point disruption. You get any remaining marches or for your, your full marches can go around the back and secure the back lane while any other teams can come to the front. Again, if, if you're not on the offensive uh, for Team 3 or Team 2, you can defend the structure and then based on a specific time, you can move your troops to the middle. This, these two specific teams for this strategy is very important because if you're, you're, you're a member a focus in these two specific teams you have more marches available to defend attack as well as support the mid game so this in my opinion um, these two teams should be heavily stacked with players to support the art game all right so again guys this is just like a starting off team strat just to make to help you guys be more focused on the fundamentals of the game because I know it can be frustrating putting a team together and putting down a strategy, figuring out what teams do what, what teams do this, what team be you know attacking this altar, what team will be attacking this person, or random people are just rallying things and people are trying to figure out what do I fill, what do I defend. This specific lane strap will give you your team specific focuses. Um, It'll outline who are the who are the better players, who can be team leads, who can be team captains, who can be the garrison leads of your your team, who um, who's better at coordinating when to get arc, who are the who are the arc runners. This this strategy is a good starting point for players to to really figure that out for your team and what works for you guys. Again, arc is played on so many different levels. Um, so many elite teams have so many. Um, unique strategies and plays but in order to get to that level you really have to understand the objectives understanding specific focuses of the game and then you can build upon that to make any strategy your own you this may work for a lot of people this may not and i'm sure a lot of people already use this type of you know starting off point but i really want to share with you guys share this with you guys because i know a lot of people come to me asking me these questions like my team is, is struggling to like like to win an arc well i ask them what's your how do you set up your teams or how do you distribute what players go where a lot of people that i ask don't know that so i thought i would share this basic foundation with you guys and i really hope that it helps to get your team to a uh, to the next level of just you know winning your basic art games just by having a starting off point um there's so many other strategies out there telling you you know you need fast cash for this or you need specific march for this that is all fine but you need to really get the basics down of how your teams are set up before you can get to the next level i really hope this helps Feel free to you know give me feedback on this. Again, I there's so many different strategies out there, but for me, I really like this one in particular because it gives my myself a specific objective depending on what team I'm on. If I'm on team four, my job is to make sure that that shrine of life is ours. And that sky altar over here in the corner, we're gonna get that when it's time to push. 
and having a specific team captain without any chaos on that voice chat will definitely let me know, okay, when it's time to go, when it's time to defend. Hope this helps. Um, if you guys do, I hope you like and subscribe to the channel. Other than that, you guys have a great day and thank you so much. Thank you.